and gentlemen, welcome to the Keith Andrew Network. I am your host, Keith Andrew, and today we have a very special guest. We are here with Stephanie Hallwich. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. No, the honor's all mine. For people <laughs> who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can still amount to something. And at Absolutely. the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's to prove to them you can break the labels. So hashtag break the labels. With that being Absolutely. said, starting off, I'm going to ask you some easy questions, then some hard-hitting ones. <laughs> And it's pretty much a normal conversation, and you're making a new friend and supporting a good cause. No math problems, right? <laughs> <laughs> and starting off, what can you tell us about yourself? Uh, well, I'm here at the studio. Uh, I'm a singer, performer, and voice teacher. So um, my day will consist of anything from like running to the city for an audition, coming back and teaching, then going off to a rehearsal things like that. Um, I try to keep it interesting and just do kind of like what you want to do. Like, don't give a label to the way your life should be. Just live it how you think would make you happy. Pretty much that's it. No, absolutely. Now, my next question I was going to ask you is what motivates you every day to do what you do? So, like, what is your motivation? I think... There's two things. One is just that performing is just so fun. Like it's like some people have cracked and some people have, um, you know, jumping out of planes or whatever they have is their thrill. That that's my thrill. So that's what I keep chasing. And so you know you keep wanting to get that next gig, do that, like meet that next person who's going to let you do this more. And then you find yourself in sort of interesting and new situations where you get to do that very thing. And the other one would be um, helping people find their voice so that they can do this kind of thing as well. They can use it however they want to to make them happy. No, absolutely. Now, my next question I was going to ask you, so when you were growing up, did you ever do any sports? And when you were in college, were you studying or a party animal? Okay, so one, um, I never did sports. I am very, I'm getting test messages. Um, I'm very, I'm coordinated for choreography and that's it. I can't catch things and throw things. And like, I would be that girl where we would play soccer and I would like score one for against my own team. I just get flustered in that sort of moment of, I wasn't cut out for it. I just, I, mm. Um, but I like I like physical activity. Like I I like to work out. I like to do my Zumba classes. Um, but I I'm not a sports. I've never been on a sports team ever, except like once in my little gym class. That didn't really count. It wasn't really an after school thing. Um, and what was the second one in college? Yes. Um, in college, I was I started out trying to be the really good music student and I would like hit the practice room and not have any other uh, sort of distractions. And I didn't want to go out. I, didn't, I wanted to make friends and I had my friend, but I was very serious. And then somewhere around the midpoint, I got like a little stir crazy with being upstate in New York and Potsdam. Um, but it gets, you know, you get very secluded and isolated and it's cold and it's dark. And so me and my friends kind of, started partying more so we had our little party phase toward the end which i don't regret it was fun we didn't get into too much trouble <laughs> but um we still were able to keep our music study going and have like fun at the same time be a person yeah it's always good to be up for crazy things <laughs> yeah exactly now the next question i was gonna ask you is did he ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids or not into the whole human pyramid thing um that's funny because you brought that up before I don't think I have ever taken part in any sort of a human pyramid situation that I can recall. And I feel like I would recall something like that. <laughs> I don't think I've been involved. <laughs> Again, 
sports thing, but it could be a choreography. I've never so been like a be both. <laughs> Would he ever be in a beep and snot me farting, by the way? <laughs> oh, it's saying a beep and it's not me farting or anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> then again. <laughs> <laughs> then again, I am. Um, so, but yeah. would he ever be interested in doing one, or it's not your, not your thing? I think I would probably knock it over, and everybody would fall, and it would be my fault, and then I'd feel bad. So, maybe not. I don't know. Hey, don't Is knock that, it till you try, like, right? I do human pyramid. <clears throat> hey, never a, say a, never, right? Okay, yeah. I'll never <laughs> say never. If no, it was like, West, oh, go ahead. If I got, if I got like paid on stage to do it, I would do it. <laughs> hey, man, never say never. Yeah. Now, the next question I was going to ask you while wrapping up the college is what did you major in? Um, I majored actually first in music education with a vocal concentration, and then I have a master's in vocal performance. So I got got the teaching license first and then I did performance. Oh, nice. And now for people who don't know, we've been talking on and off about doing a group interview and if your girlfriends ever want to join join to do a double interview, they're more than welcome to. And was that I, be oh, go ahead. Well, um, I don't know when our next rehearsal is, is the only thing, but if I know I'm going to be with like a bunch of colleagues that I like, I'll let you know. All right. Yeah, hey, I'm always looking for people, so the more the better. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, you guys are actually in your own band. Um, we do have um, a vocal group called the Jewel Tones. Um, we're a vintage vocal trio, kind of like um, if you think about like the Andrews Sisters. Um, we don't have a set band, but we do work with instrumentalists when we get when we can when we can get hired to do it, and they have the budget for it. So um, we have like a couple of pianists we've worked with. We can add rhythms or like um, a solo sax or something like that. Um, but we mostly focus on the the sort of three part harmony type things. All right. Now my next. Uh, I'll oh, go ahead. I know Skype was a storm. It's like a breaking and breaking out. Just just that it's a lot of fun. We we do lots of fun stuff. Now my next question I was going to ask you is. Social media. Can social media make you or break you? And it was everything that you do, do you think that influence influences people to work with you or size you up? Hmm. That's a really good question. I I think that if people use it to size you up, then those are not the people that you want to align with professionally anyway. So I think it doesn't hurt, but um, I'm not sure. I don't, I've not gotten a lot of gig opportunities from social media, except when it's like other people posting that they want, like, oh, we're looking for singers for this, and I'll reply to that and send them all my materials. I haven't had anyone like catch me from one of my videos yet. So, um, but I do have, I have Facebook, I have Instagram, I have Twitter. I don't really use it, um, and I have Snapchat, but I think I've only Snapchatted like once. Uh, but that's just for talk to my friends. So I do, I do post some videos and stuff, but I don't know. I haven't decided how much that's helping me professionally, but it does help me when I am on social media to try and look for those opportunities to try and, you know, find some work. So oh. yeah. Now the next, well, we're on subject. You know, I'm on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, oh, and yeah. sometimes Stage 32, but I haven't been using it as a way. Snapchat, I never use it. I keep hearing about it, but I kind of like, eh, what's the point? I have yeah. before made a major one. Oh, three major ones anyway: Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. But with that being said. Does that dictate if people should work with you, or is it that? Okay, let me give me an example. I'm trying to say. The okay. first one is, does um, I try and uh, think? Okay, was I having a brain fart? 
with social Doesn't media, it... does your following dictate you know, if people should work with you, or is it your message? And what I mean by that is I don't really have a big following, but okay. I have a strong message. Do you think that's good enough for people to say, hey, I'm going to jump on his bandwagon? Or at, oh. or at the same time, is it like, well, yes, he has a strong message, but he doesn't have the following. So with that being said, turning it back to you, do you, what is your opinion and do you think that's a, a pro or a con? Well, okay, I think a strong message is, is great. Like, that's what you need to, I think, to get the following. So the thing is, if you have a strong message but nobody knows about it, that's really hard because then how do you how do you get people connected with you so i think that once you you establish your message which you have then i think maybe we can use the social media to attract people just to be like hey this is out there this is something that we're doing just to let them know so that if they see it and they go oh look there's that strong message let me connect with that but if they don't ever hear about that then they have no way of of getting to you do you know what i mean right i do try to use mine um, just to basically have just a fun atmosphere, just to be positive, maybe, um, maybe put up, but it's not just self-promotion. It's not just like, here, look at this thing and look at that thing of me, 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 me. It's more just like, here's a fun atmosphere. This is things I believe in, positive messages, um, some fun pictures. And also, okay, so here's a clip of something I'm really proud of. So people can connect with me more about like my personality and stuff. And then um, if they like what I do and they like me, okay, fine. Then we connect more. I don't think I have a huge following either. Um, it's just more of a vehicle for me to show, like, if people say, oh, where can I find you? Oh, oh come to here and here and here. And they have, they have a platform. No, me. absolutely. And what is your opinion? Say, for an example, I don't know, have you ever worked in retail? I have worked in retail. <laughs> now, that's a two-part question I was going to ask you. One, do you yeah. have any funny stories? But mm -hmm. at the same time, if people recognized you as a singer and you performed all over the place, do you think that's good for you and the store? Because you're bringing in people, and at the same time, it's kind of like, hey, you have an upcoming celebrity working for you. This would be great. Oh. Uh Okay. Well, when I did work retail, it was mostly in school, so it wouldn't be a thing where I would be recognizable. And I, I think the work that I do, I don't know. It's not about like me. You know what I mean? If I'm in a show, they don't necessarily remember me. They remember my character. Um, maybe they do, but um, that's interesting. Does it look good for the store? I don't know. Because sometimes the store doesn't want to be known for anything but what they're selling. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, but, I mean, everyone needs a job. And if you're a performer, you're a wonderful people person. And so retail is a, you know, a fine choice. So a lot of, I have a student right now who's working retail. And she said that she was talking to a customer. I guess this is my story of hers because mine aren't that true. Um, she said that she mentioned that she was studying opera with me and also auditioning for um, for college programs. She actually did one today. Um, and that she was like, oh, yeah, I like to sing opera. I'm studying. And then the guy goes, oh, my partner here works at the Met. And so it was like a random connection. And apparently the store didn't like that because they're like, you can't be telling customers about your personal life and trying to get something she wasn't trying to get anything she had yeah. no idea of it but um but they didn't like it they thought you know just talk to them about what they need in the store don't talk to them about other things so i wonder if that would be a good thing or a bad thing i guess it depends on the store you know All right. uh, for an example when i was getting hired over at sax fifth uh they're okay they're always getting robbed <laughs> it does say oh. <laughs> They need. They really need to update their security. <laughs> but with that being said, um, I was filling out the application, and in one part it's like, "Oh, do you use social media?" And I was like, um, "No." <laughs> okay. So yeah, I lied on the application because this my talk show means a lot to me. Mm. And I want to do this until I die. You know, I want to grow. I want to become more professional. 
I want to be more extinguished. You know, this right now is all trial and to use trial by fire, but I'm very yeah. passionate about it. I would love to do this till I die. You know, get like a studio. And I was thinking, if it ever comes to a point where I have to make a decision saying retail or this, hands down, I'm going to choose this. I don't think you should have to, though. I think you should be able to do both. I mean, like, if there's going to be a store that's going to be, you know, negative towards you about it, you can find another store that won't. You know, especially if it's maybe it's a store that sells something related to TV production or or web things, computers. You know what I mean? They might like having a personality there. That's true. And I have a lot of stories about, you know, the job. And pretty much, you know, they put me on to do not rehire us. <laughs> and oh. I didn't do anything bad. I, yeah. I just don't give a, give a damn. I didn't do anything bad. What happened was, the one, if you want to hear it, I can tell you the story. Take my coffee light. This is good TV. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you like to hear the story? Mm -hmm. All right. So what happened was I went for the interview, and the guy really liked me. It was all doomed from the start. It was pretty like the Titanic. It, it was never supposed to work. So I went for the interview. Guy said, I really like you. Unfortunately, we're not hiring for cashiers, and we don't need you right now. Then he called me back and said, this is about August of 2016. And he's okay. like, um, I, I'm going to make up a position for you. It's going to be a stock slash operations. You're going to be operations slash stock. And basically... What you gotta do is come in every morning at 8 a.m. and you gotta clean the sensors, you gotta do the hangers, you clean up the back room, and that's really it. You gotta mostly be a stock person, and that's really your job title. Unfortunately, half the yep. time when I went to do the stupid job, it was already done for me. And yeah. I was kind of like, oh, great, that's fine, you did my job for me, but. That's my job title. What am I supposed to do now? But right. at the same time, he wanted me there. The hiring person did not want me there. She was against it from the start. You were set up to fail. Yeah. Mm. And she always, and she knew I had a disability, and she always talked to me like this. It's like, this is how I'm going to talk to you for an example. Okay, Sarah. This oh. is, I may not. Steph okay, Stephanie, this is what we're gonna do today, alright? We're gonna take it nice and slow and I was biting my lip, it's like I know I'm retarded and uh, that's what I'm labeled as, but you don't have to talk to me like that. Mm. And every time I did something wrong, it's like okay, we're going mm. to do this now and it's kinda like does anyone else see this? It, yeah. Am I crazy? Okay, maybe I am crazy a little bit, but, but it's kind of like you don't need to talk to me like that. And he, I could knock a number of times, as in I said I, I don't want to do it. I, I quit, and he always talked me out of it. So I stayed there. I finished my. I purposely stayed to my ninety days. My original idea was to leave when he left, because he hired me. But after the 90 days, and I was constantly, you know, okay, so this is what you're going to do today. It's like, you know, um, when he says, hey, George, what am I going to do today? <laughs> All right, George, I got to do this. And it's, uh, it's like that. I like, I can't take it anymore. So when I finished the 90 days from August to November, said, finished the 90 days, I want to leave. And if you guys ever look for a, um, Cashier, I will be more than happy to come back. Nope, we're gonna put you on the do not rehire list. Why okay. did you put me on the do not rehire list? Because you didn't finish your ninety days. I finished the ninety days. Yeah. And I no nope, 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 George, you do not finish the ninety days, George. George, you do not do that. And it's kind of like the hell is you, and the hell is the store. Yeah, it's not a good match. And I even said to my dad, and I don't mean um, complain to you, I do apologize. 
And I even said to my dad, hey, yo, I really don't want the job. And he's like, well, go and try it. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what's the worst that can happen? Anyway, uh, it's not about me. This is about you. But with that being said, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And let me come back. I'm going to ask you two more hard-hitting subjects. And then I'm going to pass the show over to you. Okay. Very Arlene Schofield. My name is Shireen Snow. My name is Carla A. Miles. This is Anna Camuto. This is Christine Dunford. And me, Eden. Caroline Macy. This is Walker Fannin. Marianne Camille Dixon. I'm a Saturday's Warden. My name is Linda Preston, and you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. It's Russo. Me, Mark Medley. Hi, everybody. This is Mark Neely. Barry Babic. This is Peter Bruno. My name is Kyle Collier. This is Santiago, uh, better known as Dynamite. I'm Richard Epcar. Mars Chow. This is Kerry and Mayhan. This is Goldar. And we both support Keith Andrew. My name is Ron Wasserman, and I am supporting Keith Andrew and what he is doing. And you better do the same, or I'm going to come kick your ass. Ladies, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 462. I'm here to talented and beautiful Stephanie Hollich. I just want to say thank you for sticking with us for the last 15 minutes left. I'm going to ask you two hard-hitting questions, and I'm going to pass it over to you. You can ask me anything you want. Gloves off. But the okay. first question I was going to ask you, you mentioned you are a teaser and mm-hmm. an upcoming singer. And with that being said, have you ever worked with people with a word in dis- besides me, have you ever worked with people with a word in disabilities and with people who do have disabilities who want to work mm-hmm. with you? How do they go about it? Um, okay, well, the the short answer is yes. I have worked with several different learning disabilities. Some of them are more or less forthcoming with the disabilities because I think they're afraid that I might judge them. But it actually helps if you're going to work with a teacher to um, tell them the nature of your disability so that we can make um, any kind of adjustments we need to help you. It's only going to be good. Like if you... Um, I worked with somebody with a tracking disability. Do you know what that is? Like they, their eye got confused with reading the music. So they just needed to use their finger to like track where it was. But that didn't mean that they couldn't read like everybody else, read the music like everyone else. You just needed that extra little or like a piece of paper to mark where they were. Right. Uh, and that was easy fix. There's Music has a place for everything. Even there are people who are... Um, um, I've taught people who are on the autism spectrum. I've had people with reading disabilities, people with some vision disabilities, um, but nothing like, um, not as bad as like legally blind or anything yet. Um, but there's definitely a way to, because music is really all of our senses. So as long as we have facilities in most of them, we're able to create music. It just might not be like, we might have to go about it a slightly different path and that's okay. So, um, I'm, I'm happy to work with anybody as long as they want to be here and they're willing to work to be better. That's really it. So a good teacher is not going to, not going to judge you. They're going to work what you do well. Well, I get judged every day, so I know how that feels. Yeah. But uh, what else do you tease? I know you're very passionate about being a teaser, but do you do like self motivation or most, uh, most, uh, I can't, I am, I can't pronounce the nerd. Uh, self motivational, do you do like speeches that you help people overcome their uh, difficulties? Um, not specifically. I'm, I'm a singing teacher. I teach people to use their singing voice, but. There is a lot of um, anxiety that comes with that sometimes. So we definitely do work on trying to move through, trying to process, trying to give um, different techniques to just, um, I just say it's like being comfortable with being uncomfortable kind of thing. Because it's never not going to be uncomfortable. There's always going to be something nervous or weird happening while you're performing. Um, My last gig, I finished a phrase and it was at a restaurant, and there was a waiter who was making, I did not know this, making bananas foster. And I finished a phrase, and all of a sudden, 
whoosh, this big like fiery flame came up. <laughs> that was weird. Who, you know, who knew that would happen? So, so I just kind of made a joke about it and I was like, oh, pyrotechnics at this restaurant. And I kind of made it a joke, but I was freaked out. So, you know, there's always something, something to be nervous about. So um, we do talk a lot about that. But um, but the only thing I officially teach right now is is uh, is voice lessons. So, but who knows? <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, I know I did talk a lot about about myself, and I know the show isn't about me. You know, I could do that little speech. Basically, I'm turning myself into an expression. But basically, the reason I did a talk show, it's pretty much therapy for myself. It helps me with my people skills. It helps yeah. me with my confidence. And it just helps me interact and be a better person. So basically, I'm a work in progress. So are we all, absolutely. <laughs> well, with that being said, it was the last 12 minutes after the show. I'm going to pass it over to you. You can ask me anything you want. I don't hide anything. Was there mm -hmm. anything you wanted to promote? Any new projects you're working on? This is your time. Okay, well, um, I know that I'm going to be singing at the duplex on May 12th with the incomparable singer, Melissa Delancey, Mel Delancey. Um, she's doing a feminist journey through musical theater. She's doing that. So we'll be singing with her in that show. Um, I'm also singing back at Grosso's, which is the flambe place, <laughs> um, on May 4th with uh, Bob Lefley at the piano. We probably will have a bassist as well. Um, working on getting us some jewel tones gigs we gotta we kind of like take a break at this time of year and come back together for the spring and summer so working on getting that together um what else what else um i will be promoting my own disability which is crohn's disease it's a disease it's a disability it is um so um i wrote and produced something called the Crohn's Cabaret. I called it Flair, the Crohn's Cabaret. And so I'm doing a piece of that for a board of um, doctors who specialize in inflammatory bowel disease. So I'll be doing a little piece of that cabaret for them um, also in May, I forget the date. Um, so that's what I know I have coming up, a few possible things in the works, but um, that's what I know I have coming up so far. Um, that's all I can remember right now, anyway. Well, if you don't mind me for asking, have you ever thought about going and singing at Comic-Con? I know there's a Comic-Con on Long Island called the A-C-E. And there's also a Comic-Con in uh, Poughkeepsie. Have you ever thought about going? What would I sing? Like, comic book things? Well, Comic-Con, uh, it started out as comic book based. But, you know, uh -huh. celebrities go for, like, meeting greets, they do Q&As, they do live panels, live uh, events and performances. And as mm -hmm. a singer, I think that would be a great thing for you. Okay. I would. I never thought about that, actually. I'm not, I don't know anything about sci-fi. Like, I'm not, my husband's super into it, and I, I, I've seen all the Marvel movies, but I don't, I don't follow the comic book universe so i think i would just be intimidated to even go but it, i would definitely look into it yeah, because, yeah. Um, i did do a concert called um what was it called comic books live i think it was no it was called video games live that's what it was sorry um and it was all these songs that were written for the soundtracks of video games whether it was like sort of incidental music or to like build the tension or um, the theme song, like somebody played the, the Zelda theme song. <laughs> and she had done that at a con. And that's how she was discovered into this, that concert. So something like that. I would, I would, I would read on it. <laughs> Actually, while on the subject, there is a website that I am a part of. But I think you would get a lot more out of it. It's called okay. CelebrityVM.com. It will basically, yeah. what that is, is for upcoming celebrities like myself and you, but yes. mostly for you because you're a bigger celebrity than I am. Yeah. And it's pretty much, um, say I came across your, uh, you get to create your own uh, platform and tell people what you're doing. And you can charge like $20. Like, hey, uh, Sarah, I saw, uh, why am I calling you Sarah? Hey, Stephanie, 
Uh, I work with someone named Sarah, though. That's why. <laughs> oh, Hebrew name too. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. so, so that being said, you know, uh, I lost my train of thought. So basically, you know, if I someone comes across your profile, hey, can I get a shout out? Today's my birthday. Basically, it's recommendations. And if you're a fan of Game of Thrones, House of Cards, WWE, you get to interact with your fans. So you should okay. definitely check out celebritybm.com. I'm well, on there, but I have, I'm not a celebrity yet, and I haven't gotten anyone. Even though my page was viewed over 200 times, go figure. <laughs> but, hey, for you, you're an upcoming singer, you're doing performances. And I think it'll be terrific for you. Okay, I'll definitely look. Celebrityvm.com. Yep. With that being said, was there any subjects you want to talk about? Anything you want to ask me? Sure. Um, okay, so what I was thinking is, because you said you mentioned that you wanted to have more followers to give out your strong message. So have you ever um, targeted like different Facebook groups that are for people with certain disabilities? And get them that way. Um, I tried. You know, I pretty much uh, if it catches my interest, yeah. then I would actually go and promote them. I am part of certain groups of acting groups, and mm -hmm. I actually looked for a group of you know, it's like actors with disabilities, and I was okay. like, oh, that's perfect for what I'm doing. And I looked for a group for that on Facebook, but there is no group. Uh, people that you know pretty much out in themselves saying yeah I'm an actor but I have a disability so I am for me I'm very selective on who I invite you know everyone's more than welcome to be on the show but yes I have interviewed people with disabilities I did a special interview special interview recently that was a fun interview it was a, a deaf girl basically mm -hmm. I would type on my phone and I would hold it up you know, I no one told me she was deaf, and I, and so, hey, whatever. I don't judge anyone. If you want to be on the show? You're more welcome. So, you know, I interviewed a uh, deaf girl. I interviewed um, a guy who has Sarah Posey's, but he's a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I interviewed. Hey, hang on. Why did this thing just jump on? I, this Siri has a mind of its own. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, but I interviewed someone who had, like, you know, Sarah Posey's, and it's pretty much that saying that, you know, I interviewed a deaf girl, one of Sarah Posey's, an actress in her wheelchair. It's pretty much saying that labels don't dictate who you are and who you're going to be, and you should prove to them you can break the labels. Okay. And, I, you know, I have interviewed actors, actresses, models. CEOs, professional wrestlers, people with learning disabilities, people without disabilities. I like to cater to everyone. So yeah. it's pretty much saying, hey, you know, I have a disability. And that's one thing people are starting to say to me and it's starting to annoy me. It's like, do you just interview people with disabilities? It's like, no, I'm turning myself into an example saying, you know, people who said I'm handicapped, mentally disturbed, retarded, look at what I can do. I'm turning myself into an example. But nice. yes, if you have a disability and you have a talent, I, you're more than welcome to be on the show. Mm -hmm. All my interviews isn't... Okay, let's look at it like this. Thanks to you, we did over 462 interviews, officially. Mm -hmm. Half of those people had disabilities, and half of those people did not have disabilities. Mm -hmm. But I'm showing you I can interview a whole a variety of people, if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. No, I just mean to get them to follow you, though. So you could just be like, oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, just to be like, oh, look at this awesome thing I do. Like, um, when I was promoting my Crohn's Cabaret, right. I went to, like, the Crohn's and Colitis support groups, and I said, Check out this amazing. Thing. Oh, I keep. Don't worry about it. You're doing perfect. I keep having things pop up. <laughs> um, but I, you know, just to be like, look at what I'm doing. Here's a clip from the cabaret, just so they might like 
want to follow me on Instagram or might want to come to the show if they're in the New York area or might want to like, who knows, like fly me out and I'll do the show over there. So um, that's like a, a way to just use the social media to get into those groups or to start the group. Yeah. You know what I mean, what's to say you don't start a group for actors with disabilities? I'm sure that's, but I see what you're saying. They don't want to necessarily put that out. They want to hide it as much as possible so they don't get pegged for a certain thing. But I don't know, it might be worth starting. Um, yes. I guess, can I ask one more question? Yeah, you can ask me whatever you want. I would say, um, what do you think you're most proud of, like, that you've been able to overcome? Um, I guess I can start off with the college one. It's because I, people who go to college and get like a, a bachelor's and a BA and everything. And I'm showing them, hey, I never went to, you know, you went to SUNY Potsdam. Hey, I never went to SUNY Potsdam or I never went to Orianta or I never went to Harvard or whatever SUNY four-year school they um, have. And I'm showing you. Yes, look at someone who reads and learns at a fifth grade level and who is classified mentally disturbed, you know, retarded. Look at what he was able to produce on his own. Yeah. You know, I've been using iMovie for, you know, since 2000 and 2000, 2001, so sort of past, you know, 18, 17 years. Mm -hmm. And no one taught me how to do it. You know, I watch, you know, my dad make his own videos and I say, like, oh, monkey see, monkey do. And so I copy that. Um, then I joined the audiovisual department. And then, you know, long story short, I got sick out of it. I didn't want to work in retail. Um, I just got tired of saying, what am I going to do with my life? Make up, long story short. But I'm showing you, you know, someone who's not educated, but they have the passion to do what they love, that's all you need. You don't need some fancy degrees. And it's kind of funny to think about it. Look at someone who has all their marbles together and they have yeah. their and bas bachelors and masters, but they can't drive a car. And they, they can't do other things. And you kind of wonder, you know, you're supposed to be great and wonderful. You have a master's. But you can't even drive a car. But, excuse me. <laughs> and then at the same time, you're kind of like, look at this person who reads the words at a fifth grade level. But he can produce his own talk show. Yeah. So it's kind of like those labels. It's like what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can turn it around and be make it a positive almost because you can use what you have. No, absolutely. That's good. Now, with that being said, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an extra two more minutes. Was there any more things you wanted to talk about or, or are you all good? This is your time. You can ask me whatever you like. I guess what's your, what's your ultimate goal? Like where do you see yourself taking either this show or like your next project? Sorry, I just uh, fixing my timer. <laughs> um, I had an opportunity. I think I screwed myself over, but at the same time, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise. I there's this uh, studio in my town, and uh, it's like the movie theater slash Studio Six, and they advertise on a public broadcasting. Channel 22. I don't know if it's the same channel for Long Island. Well, I don't know what uh, public broadcasting channel it is out there. Um, so basically, I went in, I talked to him, and I introduced myself, said, Yeah, come in. He showed me, I was so pissed too. He showed me around saying, This is the studio, it was really nice. Here's the stage. And then he brought me into the, um, the broadcasting room. We have three different cameras, they're in HD. Very wonderful. And what broke the camel's back was he never said to me, do not talk about it and do not promote yourself. If he said, would have said that, I would have said, okay. But he didn't. So I thought, 
well, maybe it's okay if I can just promote myself. And I got over a million people saying that we can't wait to see this. And then from, for some reason, people in Warwick, the, you know, the uh, higher powers, said, yeah, uh, they weren't really happy with the fact that you were promoting yourself. And it was kind of like, you never said I couldn't do it. But then they said, you know, the other thing was I had one in an introduction. And it's like, how can you get people to like public broadcasting? And then it's my last thing, I'm going to wrap up. How can you like people like uh, public broadcasting? Came up with an introduction. Came up with uh, the ending. It's pretty much what we're doing, but it would be live. And okay. Oh, go ahead. No, I like I like the idea. No, absolutely. And they said I was not the right fit. And I'm like, well, is it because um, and I well, we don't have to do the introduction. And he's like, yeah, we're not going to do the introduction because we're cheap. I'm like, okay, fine. Forget the introduction. Forget the credits. And um, can I still take questions from the audience like we talked about? No. All Ooh. right. Can I still use the name the Keith Andrew Network presents the sit-down with Keith Andrew? Can we still use that name? No. And then at the time, everything we had set up, they were saying no, no, no. And on the ice in our vessels, oh, by the way, we're going to own all rights to you and your video. Uh -huh. <sighs> mm. Yeah, mm. you could do better than that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. So then maybe we just get all the followers to tune into what you're doing now and then wait for somebody to be so, you know, enthralled by it that they pick it up on their own channel or whatever they do. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm wrapping up. You know, I, I've i been on radio. With TV, I, it's really hard to get on TV, but, you know, I had been on blog shows. I've been on um, actual radio in the city. Um, I can tell you more off the air. But, you know, it's for when I'm trying to get myself out there. This is how I see it. Social media. Twitter, I have over 900. My Facebook fan page, I have over six. Instagram, it's over three. LinkedIn, it's over a hundred. Um, Pinterest and Tumblr, I don't know, 30, 20. I don't really use them that much. But it's kind of like I'm showing you, and my fan made parodies that I do for fun, you know, like mm -hmm. Jumbo Buck and Dumbo, all that stuff. They're getting like millions of views. And who doesn't like Disney, right? <laughs> but yeah. it's kind of like I'm showing you look at all these different things I can do. But yeah. it's kind of like, you know, every day I'm working on myself. I'm trying to get people interested. Um, I'm doing the best I can. No one wants to help me with it. They're too busy making jokes. But, hey, look at what I did in four and a half years. Yeah. But with that being said, mm -hmm. uh, my last two questions for you is I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But okay. wrapping up, how can people follow you on social media? Are you on LinkedIn, Twitter, Stage 32? Are you on any of those fun sites? Um, I don't know Stage 32. I'm going to have to check. I'm going to look into that one when I do the celebrity MV thing you just said. Um, okay, so Facebook, you can follow me at... Um, there's a voice teacher. It says Stephanie Horowitz Mulry, voice teacher on Long Island. That's my little thing. Um, I believe it's facebook.com slash Horowitz Mulry is one of them. Then um, Instagram is Stephanie Horowitz Mulry, my maiden name too. And Twitter, it's at Jewel Song. Or Jewel Song Jewels. I'm not sure. I don't use Twitter that much. I don't know. Um, and I think that is, that's like my main stuff. Instagram, Facebook, and a little bit more than that. Oh. <laughs> now, my last question for you is how I, I wrap up all my interviews. Going on okay. the record, I'm a big fan of Barrel Rally, so, you know, the spin stops here. Going on the record, when I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, 
What yes. was your honest reaction? And what made you say yes? Um, I thought it was an interesting idea. And I think it's really, really, really important that we put out messages that say, this is not the way it usually goes, but this is the way I'm doing it. I think that's so important with everything from like, you know, models with different body types that are usually not as accepted to um, if people with disabilities show them how powerful they can be. I'm really into just individual empowerment. Whatever you have can be your superpower. And most, a lot of people are raised to think that that's not true, that if there's something wrong with you, it can only be a detriment. And so part of my journey as a performer and a teacher is to say, whatever you have is your superpower and you can be super with it. So when I heard that that's really what you're doing too, um, I definitely thought, sure, why not, you know, take a part in that. That's basically it. Do you have any regrets? No, not at all. <laughs> I'll be back with some other friends. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air about wrapping up our interview segment. It was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest, and I'm looking forward, looking forward to part two down the road. Okay. <laughs>